thing I'd like to challenge. Uh, perhaps it's not as true as it is written here. But I do not remember any kind of pancreatic pathology which I have not seen by transabdominal ultrasound and only by endoscopic ultrasound. Some water into the wine, sometimes after knowing the results of endoscopic ultrasound. But I challenge myself and in our group that afterwards, if we have not seen something, we try everything to get it from outside. So that's one of the challenge um, one might uh, think about. For example, that was a case I found the lesion only uh, at a second look. Um, the ERCP shows um, a stop of the contrast right on here. And um, who might be experienced in ERCP, that means a stop is always suspicious of ductal adenocarcinoma of the pancreas. Looking for that lesion by endoscopic ultrasound, you have a small calcification. And what is more important, and we put it into our mind, this lesion is hypervascular in comparison to the surrounding pancreatic parenchyma. What can it not be? A ductal adenocarcinoma. And after, let's say, knowing that lesion, uh, it was about, uh, what was the size? Uh, it was about 8 millimeters. Um, we could find it uh, also by the transabdominal route in the standing position, turning the patient a little bit to the side. And a contrast enhanced ultrasound from outside also showed us it's a hypervascular lesion. So um, um, both methods have been in the same way. That's, uh, let's say, the um, uh, contrast enhanced study. Uh, you can nicely depict that this lesion is um, ISO or hyper-enhancing, and you can nicely depict also the morphology as shown by endoscopic ultrasound. What is the message? We think always about that. Ductal adenocarcinoma are mainly a hypovascular lesion. Whenever you find in the pancreas a hypovascular lesion and no contraindication for radical operation of couch whipple, no metastasis in the liver, thorax or wherever, and no comorbidity. The patient go within three days to the surgical department for operation without any kind of, um, let's say, histological proofness of that lesion. If you have a hypervascular lesion, don't give that patient to the surgeon. Make the diagnosis because it might be autoimmune pancreatitis, which is a disease treated by corticosteroids. It might be hamatoma in that case, you have to do nothing. It might be neuroendocrine tumor. The kind of operation would be different. You, in the benign form, you enucleate that pancreas parenchyma sparing in that individual patient. And in the serous microcystic adenoma, which microcystic means is a solid tumor, you can make um, a watch and wait uh, and, um, because those tumors um, have very, very, very rare malignant transformation almost in no... Uh, five cases have been reported up to now in the literature. So ductal adenocarcinoma are hypervascular, and that's not only our opinion. We have a multi-center trial uh, which will be published by Donofrio and some Japanese groups and our group. We have more than 1,000 patients evaluating that, and um, uh, I guess that's a good multicentric study which will be published soon. This is a pancreatic head, and this is a 3D image of a pancreatic head. You can nicely depict by contrast and hand 3D ultrasound the individual vessels, and there you have a 10 millimeter a ductal adenocarcinoma, hypovascular. This is one of the rare lesions after operation who have survived more than four or five years. And most of patients which are reported, if you reconsider the histology, haven't had ductal adenocarcinoma, have had a different kind of uh, entity, so there are only very few long-term survivors. Ductal adenocarcinoma is mainly hypovascular using the transabdominal and endoscopic approach. Computer tomography is not such helpful because it does not delineate such small vessels. 
one more time. Common hepatic bile duct, ductal adenocarcinoma. That has been published in comparison to um, uh, hypervascular lesion, which might be neuroendocrine tumors, or which might be serous microcystic pancreatic adenoma. You can always display that set, that lesions are iso or hypervascular in comparison to the surrounding pancreatic parenchyma. Uh, we talked about um, more than uh, 200 patients uh, to delineate um, such features and to uh, prove uh, that this hypothesis is um, worthwhile in daily routine. And the sensitivity has been more than um, 90%, and which is even more important, a high specificity could be reported. The um, multicentric uh, study of more than 1,000 patients I mentioned because it's not of importance if someone is telling some uh, of the story, but it has to be multicentric and uh, proven. The serous microcystic pancreatic adenoma is a solid tumor. So look for that histological uh, preparation. Um, uh, I thank uh, Professor Seger from Dresden for that um, uh, for that uh, images. And uh, if you look, uh, you can nicely see a central artery and a radiating um, morphology of vessel architecture in such lesion. And therefore, we call it focal nodular hyperplasia of the pancreas because of uh, that morphology. This is a real focal nodular hyperplasia of the liver. And look for the central artery in that respective case and you can depict uh, the typical image. But this is a 3D contrast enhanced uh, study of the pancreas delineating such um, central arteries in that serous microcystic um, adenoma. And it looks pretty much the same. Using the uh, approach from outside, sometimes you cannot delineate the central artery, but the lesion is hypervascular. That's easy to show. Contrast enhanced ultrasound shows that that lesion is hypervascular in comparison to the surrounding pancreatic parenchyma. Perhaps it might show um, rapid wash out, but we analyze the early arterial phase in that individual um, uh, organ examination. We do not talk about a late phase like in the liver. We talk about the early arterial phase to determine if a lesion is hypervascular or hypovascular in the whole arterial enhancement and rapid washout. Neuroendocrine tumors show typically enhancement pattern from peripheral to central and have a look, uh, I mentioned it before, that there are typical necrotic formation within. Depending on the size, also small neuroendocrine tumors show early necrotic formation. And this is also a typical sign in the pancreas, or if you look for metastasis within the liver. Endoscopic ultrasound is the imaging method to exclude pancreatic disease, not computer tomography, not MRI, because you can see in such a small insulinoma, all that other methods miss that lesion. Why do they miss that lesion? Because it's uh, from the properties of elasticity and vascularity pretty similar or a little bit hypervascular in comparison to the surrounding pancreatic parenchyma and so not displaying the typical morphology. In my next talk in a few hours I will go deeper into uh, that topic. One more time. This is a typical neuroendocrine tumor. And look that also in that small tumor, you can delineate some early necrosis formation. And this is really typical um, from um, a point of examination view. Metastasis uh, show also typically the peripheral enhancement pattern. And for example, this is a pancreatic metastasis of hepatocellular um, carcinoma. Typically, you often see 
from hypernephroma, from renal cell carcinoma, years, five years, ten years, fifteen years later, such but also other kind of tumors may metastase into the pancreas, mainly lung carcinoma, small cell carcinoma with some sort of uh, neuroendocrine differentiation. So up to 10% of pancreatic carcinoma metastasize in the mediastinum. That means endoscopic ultrasound is helpful to exclude such metastasis. But vice versa, it's pretty much the same. I talked about renal cell carcinoma as one important origin. Talking about cystic lesions, it's more complicated because also the benign and malignant variations are often hypervascular in the surrounding neoplastic tissue. And it's not true that the um, adenocarcinome variant is hypovascular, as shown for solid lesions. In um, cystic lesion, it's different. This is intrapapillary mucinous uh, neoplasia, and you can see the abundant mucus coming out of the papilla, and there's no doubt about uh, the diagnosis. And um, the same disease does exist in the bilary tree, um, and um, it's uh, uh, diagnosed by view. Ultrasound uh, and contrast enhanced ultrasound shows hypervascular surrounding tissue. Uh, if you uh, use biopsy, you might miss in that lesion that the malignant transformation is at this edge of the lesion. And you cannot exclude malignant transformation in that individual patient, even if you biopsy everything. That means whenever you have a young patient, no comorbidity and an IPMN diagnosis and no distant metastasis, this patient should be operated. There's no need for biopsy or something like that because you cannot exclude malignant transformation. It starts at one corner wherever in the tumor lesion. The mucinous cyst adenoma is more complicated, mainly in women, more or in the distal parts of the pancreas, in the cauda, corpus cauda, and shows a typical ovarian stroma cytology and histology, whereas IPMN is typically in the pancreatic head. The important differential diagnoses are pseudocysts, and you can analyze pseudocysts and see vascularity within, but that might be artifact as well. So we have the lying detector of Doppler examination, and if you can um, see uh, an arterial spectrum within that lesion, it cannot be an artifact. It's pew, pew, a vessel. But I've shown you that transversing vessels within a necrotic area is typical for inflammation as well. So the septum does not help us to differentiate between neoplasia, and inflammatory consequences. I told you about autoimmune pancreatitis. It's stiff, and the whole organ is stiff also in the early autoimmune pancreatitis formation. And it is hypervascular also in that mass lesions as shown here. Lymphoma respect surrounding vessels. And this was a patient who had a renal cell carcinoma and also a mass lesion um, in the pancreas. And you can nicely depict uh, such vessels um, transversing the lymphoma. You would never see such transversing vessels within a ductal adenocarcinoma. And the combination of renal cell carcinoma and lymphoma is typical. One has to keep in mind that this combination of tumor is not such rare as one would like to suspect. Coming to an end, we also studied that features, and um, perhaps one might say ductal adenocarcinoma is a solid tumor, mainly hypovascular. The main differential diagnosis, autoimmune pancreatitis, serous microcystic pancreatic adenoma, 
and uh, neuroendocrine tumors are hypervascular. Cystic tumors are rarely ductal adenocarcinoma, with one exception in a patient with chronic pancreatitic and pseudocyst formation. The differential diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis and pseudocysts um, and um, uh, ductal adenocarcinoma is in ductal adenocarcinoma only arteries can be displayed, whereas chronic pancreatitis shows arteries and veins. And uh, let's say in um, the differential diagnosis of pseudocyst, we look for um, a nodular uh, formation at the border of such lesion. Sometimes they are false positive, like in that case, it was a pseudocyst and not a neoplasia. But um, let's say this is a typical mucinous um, cyst adenoma showing some tiny um, septa, but uh, they um, show vascularity, whereas cystic ductal adenocarcinoma is often um, a part of a necrotic form of that ductal adenocarcinoma, as shown here. Therefore, um, the differential diagnosis of um, cystic lesions is more complicated. Whenever you are in doubt, you might biopsy and measure not CA99, you might perform cytology, which is good if it's positive, but often negative. You measure CEA. Whenever you have a lesion with a CEA level of 200 nanogram per ml, it proves neoplasia in more than 90% of patients. Whenever you measure 400 and 800, the um, in the literature, there are different values. It's an indication not only for neoplasia, but also for that malignant transformation. So I thank you very much for um, your attention.